Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Denali-29. In our last episode, a cave-in cost the group Phidias and Omel as they were caught underneath the roof collapse with a quartet of hill giants. The party held on to hope that their associates survived somehow and surmised that the split in the road from earlier may be able to take them around, hopefully to another tunnel. With their diminished numbers, they made their way across a stone bridge in a chasm where something came after them. The Zenobian cleric ordered everyone into the tunnel, hoping to escape. We rejoined them in that tunnel. Dead end! Dead end! yelled Harris the mage. The group skidded to a halt at the end of the stone corridor and turned to face the unknown. The leathery flapping of wings grew louder, and a large, gray creature landed just outside the entrance. Leaning over, the fierce creature screeched into the tunnel, causing Yolanda and Harris to both cover their ears. Advancing, the group noticed that the creature had four arms with very sharp claws. The flickering torchlight also showed the party that the long, jagged fangs were dripping with saliva in anticipation of a fresh meal. Brother Stance remarked, Gargoyle? It's a gargoyle! The monster filled the tunnel and was a bit larger than Grish, who furrowed his brow at the approach. Those things don't really exist, he muttered. Brother Stance scoffed at the remark as he prepared for battle. How do you want to do this? he asked the cleric, but a noiseless shaking of the head was the only response. Harris piped up from the rear of the party. Breeze! I have a breeze here! Yolanda, shine the light! Turning, the fighter illuminated the back of the dead end. The mage quickly looked around as the gargoyle began to stalk the party. Stance spoke up. Grish? Grish! Snap out of it. What are we going to do? The large man appeared to shake off his trance and put on a look of grim resolve. I'm going high. You're going low. Ready? Now! The cleric launched himself at the mythical beast, plowing straight into its upper torso. The monk slid under the horizontal cleric and swept a leg from the creature, knocking it off balance. This one's for Danielson, he yelled as he ex successfully took the creature down. The extensive weight of the Zenobian landed on the chest of the gargoyle, causing it to squeal in pain. Grish grasped the beast's head and began to slam it into the rocky floor. Screams of pain filled the tunnel, and Stance grasped its leg and snapped it with a quick jerk, causing even more screaming. The beast used two of its arms to slash at Grish's back, while it tried unsuccessfully to right itself. Shadows from the torchlight filled the tunnel, creating an eerie scene. Hold its head still, yelled out the monk. Bleeding and in pain, Grish did he was, as he was told, and a large rock narrowly missed the cleric's head as it crushed the gargoyle's face, causing it to go motionless. The cleric slumped down across the fallen foe, breathing heavily. Blood began to pool on the floor, and Stance noticed several deep gashes in his friend's back. Grish, are you okay? he asked. The cleric nodded, nearly exhausted, and began to rise. When seen in pain, he rose gingerly, and his head began to clear. The monk and the cleric looked at each other as they heard multiple flapping wings. More screeches filled the air, and both knew they were about to be overrun by the gargoyles. They turned to look at their friends one last time, and noticed only Yolanda was present, holding the torch high. Where, where, where is the mage? sputtered Grish. Upon hearing his name, Harris poked his head out of a camouflaged gap in the rocks. I think we're good. Let's go here. Stance and Grish looked at the pair bewildered. Get over here, yelled out Yolanda, limping over. 
She quickly explained that there was a tunnel just above the sight line. It's going to be tight for you, Grish, but Harris says it may work. Additional screeching was heard, and Yolanda yelled at the mage. Leaning out over the tunnel, the group saw him mutter arcane words and move his hands. Turning around, the trio noticed Harris had filled the tunnel with his web spell. He turned his attention back to his compatriots and yelled, It won't hold forever. Get your asses up here. Grish nodded to Yolanda. Ladies first. She scowled and pointed out his injuries. Like the man said, get your ass up there. The female and the monk helped lift the injured and heavy cleric, guiding his feet up to some ro rocky outcroppings. With a huff, he pushed himself up and found himself filling the tiny tunnel. No light was available, and he felt a tap on the head. This way, remarked the wizard, and slowly the cleric began to crawl until fresh air hit his face and he found himself in a large cave. As he exited the tunnel, flickers of light began to emerge from behind him, as well as the monk, Brother Stance. As the monk exited the tunnel, a scream was heard from behind him. Yolanda! yelled out the cleric, and a lighted torch emerged from the tunnel, followed by the fighter. Behind! Behind me! she huffed. A trail of blood followed her out as a large gash in her leg was evident. The quartet readied their weapons at the mouth of the tunnel, but only screeching came through. Several minutes of the harsh noise came, but was followed by silence. The sputtering torch showed apprehension and relief on their faces. Grish spoke. I barely got through there. They can't make it. And he slumped against the wall. Crap! he yelled as he looked behind the party. Everyone turned to see multiple eyes in the darkness behind them. And then the torch went out completely. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.